Three, two, one, go. Welcome back, everybody, to the Try to the Force podcast, a podcast from three Puerto Rican friends coming together to do deep dives into Star Wars and other nerd related media. We are talking <laughs> about Star Wars visions episode by episode. And today we will be talking about the amazing Lop and Ocho. So, what do you think? Bunny rabbits in Star Wars. <laughs> I was, uh, I was apprehensive at first. I won't, I won't lie. Uh, I'm not a furry, so like that whole like part of yep. that community. I was like apprehensive, as I mentioned, but pulled the trigger, man. Pulled the trigger and hit oh, all right. the, all the things that Star Wars is about. Found family and doing everything you can for them. Uh, so it was great, and you had Jakusa elements in it i'm like okay i didn't expect the yakuza in here great. Uh, but uh but but here we are uh yeah. so it was it was beautiful uh, especially like because that whole scene when the uh, the father is giving a uh, bun the uh, lop right the wait was she lop or was she osho she's lop, Which one was it? She's lop. lop. when yeah. she was when he was giving her the lightsaber and then he's telling the story of like the ancient jedi that came and gave the family like the whole mural and everything i was like oh Gorgeous. And then they touch the floor and the floor just lights up. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Apparently, like every Done. episode is good. It's, it's, it's fantastic. <laughs> and I was a little, I felt by the end of it, a little similar to how I felt with the twins, where I felt a little unfulfilled in the sense that it ended too much in a like unresolved manner. I mean, it's still, I think I still feel it ended well, because I mean, I see all of these stories just like all Star Wars stories are made to be continued and they're open-ended in a complete way. I don't know if that makes sense, but like, I felt this one was kind of like, oh, but, but, but what happens? Uh, so, yeah. Uh, but yeah, but it was, it was definitely a beautiful episode. But definitely good storytelling because it got you involved. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. There you yeah. Go. What about you, Nani? What, what was your... Yeah, I had no idea about this one at all like um Goose was saying like the furry thing I'm not really into <laughs> and this episode blew my mind mm -hmm. um I think uh Mo you were saying about the village bride that it gave you a lot of uh Princess Mononoke vibes because you know that whole understanding with nature and the flowing of that but to me the art style of this one was more Miyazaki than anything else it looked mm -hmm. very hand drawn and just you know like a callback to that old school heart hand drawn beauty but just like really refined so it mm -hmm. looks like old school and real but modern at the same time there was something that i think the animation on this one with the duel in different ways were probably my favorite styles of animation and the story a lot of them do the found family. I think this one was mm -hmm. the most successful at doing found family, mm -hmm. especially because you have this element of, you know, kind of reversal because it was mm -hmm. Ocho originally who wanted to add Lop to the, Lop family, to the family and the father was kind of hesitant about it. And mm -hmm. then, you know, as everything Probably happens, yeah, Lop becomes the heir to the family legacy she receives the lightsaber which mm -hmm. in my opinion this is like the most gorgeous of the lightsabers that we get oh yeah in the series it's That's <laughs> that the combination of everything. yeah that katana with the runes and the yeah, green yeah. translucent is fantastic and then you get this uh corruption of family from you know going to the dark side from Ocho who she was the one mm -hmm. that wanted her to be in the family and then she's the one that when she notices that Lop has the lightsaber but she's not even family mm -hmm. and the father is the one that has, has to say family's not just about blood mm -hmm. so I I thought it was a very very good handling of of found family and how you know perspectives can change mm -hmm. as the relationships continue And I think, especially considering that, you know, this is a lot of things were stolen from, you know, like Japanese culture to create Star Wars because we mm -hmm. know that it happened. And then having it interpreted now by Japanese creators. And one of the things that they focused on is this concept of found family. 
Mm-hmm. It, it's very transcending. And, and I think it speaks a lot to how well Star Wars in general was able to project that, uh, that it's, you know, kind of projected back. And I just, I don't know, I really enjoyed it. It really resonated with me this episode. I really loved it. Yeah, it was just beautiful in every in every aspect, honestly. Yeah. Like if 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 I if there was like an episode that I even though all of them I'm okay ending as they are, but mm-hmm. I wished for more will be Love and Osho. I think yeah. Yeah. um there was so much depth in that like sister relationship yeah. that we that that they portray uh, how, you know, Osho, it, it's, I think, going back to, you know, we're recalling some previous conversations on, like, there's, they're not inherently the villain. They're mm-hmm. doing it mm-hmm. because yeah. from their point of view, point of view. <laughs> they are trying to save view. their planet and their family. Like, mm-hmm. just, just as Lob and the father are, Mm-hmm. from their point of view fighting for the planet and their family it's just it, it, and i love that dynamic that occurs that because it, it creates much more richness for the characters mm-hmm. to evolve mm-hmm. and grow like a, i think it's that's something that maybe traditional western media fails at because somebody has to be a villain and somebody mm-hmm. has to be the bad guy yeah and somebody has to be the good guy and and Let's let's face it. That's not how reality works. It's it's mm-hmm. more of a fluid thing. And yes, there's there are definitely people that you know. Eventually, Osho create has those evil moments, and clearly they're bringing the empire to destroy the Earth, their, mm-hmm. their planet. But not from their perspective. They're trying to save the family. And I love the when Osho just like cuts the hair off. Mm-hmm. And like uses the the, the, the blood, blood, yeah. Uh, like depart from the family tradition, and then love being the adoptive one. Like the father has no resig like. Like you see no hint of like a doubt giving the yeah. lightsaber it's to love. You're my like, heir. Yeah. You are my heir. Like mm-hmm. you know, you're my you're mm-hmm. my daughter, and that's that's that is true parenting. That is family. Like doesn't matter. You know, if we're blood related. What matters is how how we treat yeah. each other. So. Yeah. And then, then especially, which really broke my heart was when he loses the second eye that Ocho mm-hmm. blinds him because yeah. she's so focused. It's a, it's a very Anakin situation. Like you're so focused in saving what matters that you end up destroying, destroying what matters. Them. Yeah, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? <laughs> yeah. And then not only does she reject the sister that she was the one that wanted to include in the family, she blinds her father and then the father to lop is like not you are fully my heir now i can't even see you have to protect the honor of the family and everything else and and i did love that it was like you know it was kind of like a yakuza family so they could <laughs> be seen as the bad guys too because you know you're yeah, mafia, right. you're doing this blah, 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 but you know and it all it has to do, you know, with the framing and how you're, you know, protecting your own family and what's important and everything. And especially considering it's so short, it's that character mm-hmm. development that happens and how those family situations are addressed. I, I was blown away. Yeah. And then I. It's kind of, it's, it's uh, kind of, uh, not, not, no, I was just going to say, like, based on like we were saying, honey, about like the episodes being so short and we've talked about it with you know uh, bad batch and other uh, shows that we've been talking about where in a short amount of time they get a lot of storytelling done which for me is like mind-blowing that some shows like i don't know to use an example game of thrones right where episodes are over an hour long or something sometimes especially like in the later seasons don't get that much storytelling done and you're just just like like we need more to like know what happens but here it's like the opposite it's just like oh my god we got 15 or 20 minutes and like you get everything you need and you get all those relationships that develop to a point where like they're believable deep and then you care about them too yeah and you're so, invested 
it's when a it's a beautiful off, thing and then gets lifted up when ultra you see her coming back mm -hmm. from the lightsaber like full <sighs> imperial regalia like i'm yeah, just yeah. one with the empire you're just like I, oh end credits no i need to know what happens next yep, so yep. it it really that one really really sucked you in and i was not expecting it from this one and I think, I don't know if it's intentional or not from the yeah. writers, right? But it, for me, feels a lot like what's the current climate, right? In the world, specifically, like here in the U.S. with everything that's happening with left-wing and right-wing politics and how that breaks families apart because of you think you're doing the right thing because yeah. this is what you believe in and like, and all those things. I mean, I say, I don't know, like how much. Japanese storytellers are that invested in like Western politics to like put that into like their storytelling. But maybe that's one of those reasons that it resonates a lot with like us as viewers here, because it's something that we're seeing currently. And it's like, okay, we see that that which is happening in the Star Wars story yeah, with the bunny the and the family. empire, it's yeah. happening like right now in our contemporary America. And I, I'm not going to say which side is which, uh, but if you listen to our podcast, you can figure it out. Uh, so I think that's one of the interesting things about Star Wars that we've talked about before. It's like Star Wars has always been political because Star Wars yes. always talks about real world things mm -hmm. implicitly or explicitly or accidentally or purposefully. It always makes a commentary. And I think this episode uh, more than a lot of the other ones from Visions is that episode that's like more connected to what's happening in our modern day society. Right. And I, for one, appreciate that, you know, mm -hmm. love, we finally have a non-human character like mm -hmm. taking a, a shine in the... An alien, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. That becomes not only a member of the family, but the heir to that entire tradition yeah. of that family, inheriting the lightsaber and, and everything that comes with it. And like Goose had said, that entire scene when she's presented with the lore of the family and mm -hmm. the handing down. Of, oh, it's and and, and it's, I, it's coming from a culture where yeah. the mm -hmm. family is such an important, like the traditional mm -hmm. sense of like, yeah. And especially who becomes the heir is super important because they carry yeah. not just like the honor, but the traditions and everything that has to do with the family. So that was huge when he mm -hmm. hands down all the traditions and the lightsaber to Lop. And, and she was responsive to that responsibility. And what she wants more than anything is just to get her sister back, mm -hmm. which just makes it really sad because it's like, I know you're doing the wrong thing, but I just want my sister back because- I know. Yeah. It's protect her home and protect her family. Mm -hmm. So, so love, love, love was amazing. Love stole my heart. Hey, what if Lapa and Toby meet up and they like you know go on missions together? Uh, you no know, missions of wholesomeness. Uh, that would be mission, mission, missions of wholesomeness. <laughs> let's let's make it happen. That's the title of the show. Missions of missions wholesomeness. of wholesomeness. Done. Trademark that shit. Uh, <laughs> If Lucasfilm wants to use it, they need to buy it off from us. Uh, buy it <laughs> Trademarked. T-shirt coming soon. Uh, <laughs> we'll be taken down by the mouse. Oh, not, well, not, and not, how not gorgeous <laughs> was the design that they did of like the crane combined with the Jedi symbol yes. and oh my god. So it's, it's another another starbird for the collection. And this one's just like and, and that's again what this whole show has been able to do is just like so seamlessly mix the culture, right? Yeah. Of of, ja of Japan with Star Wars in a way that just feels so natural because yeah, the crane is very inherently yeah. uh, Japanese cultural uh, figure, icon, whatever you want to say it. But we have the you know the Starbirds and for the Rebel Alliance in different configurations, and the fact that this just felt so natural. It's just a testament to like one that despite what some trolls on the internet want to say, George Lucas was 100% uh, inspired by Japanese culture. And then two, yes. that Star Wars can transcend what it is to like be able to bring everything together and make it so in a way that just feels natural and beautiful. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. 
and and it is that reciprocity about it that makes it so beautiful that it's like we know you kind of based it on our culture but now this is us telling you mm -hmm. what we think about it and it's combined with like their own ideals but then they take a lot from what star wars actually says especially you know the kyber crystals the lightsabers combining those with their own swords mm -hmm. their sense of honor the found family and you know the, your heirs and just combining all that together and i think mm -hmm. star wars just really works you know if if it you works. love it you can probably find a way to like mesh it with any type of culture yes and that's something kind of to, that's a good note to maybe like wrap up wrap up on because i saw a post on uh on Twitter, I think it was our friend over at Radio Rebellion who made a post saying that maybe a next season of Visions or something is maybe about instead of Japanese cultures, about Hispanic cultures. And that kind of made, you know, started turning my wheels on. It's like, oh, how could, I mean, first, obviously self serving, right? Because we're Puerto Rican, so I'm thinking about Puerto yeah. Rican angles first. And I'm like, oh, how can we start incorporating like aspects of like our culture as like Puerto Ricans? into star wars and like there were some really interesting thoughts that came to my mind i'm like oh shit like it can work if we like look into it but i yeah, mean again sure that's when, the riches uh, of star wars right <laughs> i think when radio rebellion mentioned it he talked about maybe doing like a dia de los muertos kind of thing mm -hmm. with combined with yeah. star wars which would be fantastic and then you don't just ne need to like mesh it with obviously with all hispanic culture would be fantastic but you could do something with like norse mythology or like mm -hmm. greek roman mythology yeah. and start combining like all these elements because there is something very mythical about star wars and transcending about star wars and then right. considering that it is supposed to be a galaxy far far away if they start really accepting the inclusiveness that is supposed mm -hmm. to be a part of right. the galaxy and then you start including all of these cultures and all these perspectives i think there's just no limit Exactly. It's not just white people in space fighting space Nazis. <laughs> that's not just what Star Wars yeah. is about. And I think mm -hmm. that's the lesson. Yeah, Star Wars is like a cool story, bro. But <laughs> exactly. No, a cool story it is, and we love it. Yeah. And that's why it yeah. worked because it's well, rooted ready to in the familiar, in the familiar yeah. of historical things that we know of. But the minute you start plugging in more things into it, the possibilities are just endless. And Make I it and I'm here for it. And more beautiful and just like more accessible to a lot of people that don't think that star wars is something that they would be interesting because mm -hmm. of the way that it's been sometimes you know stigmatized and and sometimes because the fandom is kind of hateful some people is. some people in the fandom. Some. Yeah. i said some <laughs> i think we're trying our us that are different i think we're trying to be louder and hopefully inspire other people that would think that they would not love star wars that they would get into star wars so yes here's hoping. absolutely part of the movement <laughs> well any last comments about lop and ocho or i think not until the sequel comes out i think this is a really good one candidate for like giving them like a film mm -hmm. hour and 15 yeah. minutes conclude the story fantastic animation and yes fulfillment mm -hmm. the, the, amazing it's beautiful it was great I really loved it. I really was. Ex I thought this was one was going to be one of the ones I would be like, oh, I don't care that much. But and no, <laughs> you never know. Yes, you never know. That's, that's you what happens when you embrace the cover. Life, you know? mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. <laughs> well, I think on that note, <laughs> we are done for today. We are Triad of the Force. Follow us wherever podcasts can be found. We're on Twitter, YouTube. Just search for Triad of the Force. We have some shirts. Leave a comment, like, subscribe. Let us know if you like us or hate us. You know, that's okay too. It's okay. But until <laughs> next time. I guess. <laughs> C'est la vie. <laughs> C'est la vie. May the Force be with you.